So I decided to dive in and just start talking about the most confusing group of compounds, and those are your carbonyl-containing compounds. Now, if you haven't heard this word carbonyl, that means any compound essentially with a carbon-oxygen double bond as part of it. That's what we refer to as a carbonyl. Uh, and we've got a handful of functional groups uh, that contain these carbonyls. So seeing a carbon-oxygen double bond doesn't immediately tell you all by itself which functional group you have. It tells you you've got one of a variety of different functional groups, and telling them apart uh, is really pivotal in this section. Uh, so if you see I've got them kind of up here, you've got ketones, where the carbonyl carbons bonded to two carbons, R1 and R2 have got those represented by. An aldehyde, uh, the carbonyl carbons bonded to a carbon and a hydrogen. Carboxylic acid, carbon on one side, OH on the other side. So ester, carbon on one side, and an oxygen, but not an OH, but an OR, O carbon on the other side. And then finally your amide, uh, with carbon on one side, nitrogen on the other side. This nitrogen, I've got it here listed as being bonded to two carbons. It could be also bonded to either one or two hydrogens instead of those carbons. So I just kind of left it generic a little bit there. Uh, if we look at distinguishing these, they all have a peak around 1710. So if we look at the uh, example down below, we see this peak down here just above 1700, so right around 1710 it turns out. So, And that's your, where your big absorption for carbon-oxygen double bond, a carbonyl, takes place. Uh, but like I said, it of itself doesn't necessarily tell you uh, which of these five functional groups you have. you got to go a little bit further. So in this case, all five are still kind of on the table a little bit. So, But it turns out this one also has got a couple of peaks right over here at 2710 and 2810, and that's indicative of the CH bond in an aldehyde. Now, a lot of students might think, oh, Chad, that's an SP2CH. Shouldn't that be just left of 3,000? Well, it turns out the aldehyde CH, even though it is with an SP2 carbon, uh, it's a very partially positive carbon due to the carbonyl, and it, it is different than all the other SP2 carbon hydrins. So in this case, you can't classify it as the SP2 carbon hydrin like the others. It's what we're going to just sim simply call the aldehyde carbon hydrin signal. Uh, and it gets two peaks for it, 2710 and 2810. So this combination, therefore, or de dead giveaway, we have an aldehyde in this case, not a ketone, not a carboxylic acid, not an ester, not an amide. Let's take this a little further and see some of the other nuances uh, uh, that help us distinguish between the other carbonyl containing compounds. So, in this next spectrum, we can definitely see this carbon oxygen pi bond here again just over 1700 so maybe somewhere around 1710 again so if you also notice it's a very strong absorption that carbon oxygen double bond is a very polar bond and as we mentioned earlier polar bonds tend to give stronger absorption so your your carbon oxygen double bond usually has a fairly strong absorption associated with it uh, in this case uh, we've also got this signal over here and it is just if you kind of look at which side of 3000 it's on it's just to the right of 3000 and that's going to be your sp3 CH bonds. So, and then you got this peculiar looking signal right over here, and it turns out this is nothing over in this range. Maybe you thought it might be an OH or an NH, and I said it's nothing. I mean, it's nothing you have to worry about. It turns out it's what we call an overtone. Um, if you recall, uh, we looked at different vibrational modes at the beginning of this chapter, and they were all equally spaced. And so, while there might be absorption at 1710, it turns out there might be a, a weaker absorption at any multiple of 1710. So, if you double that, that'd be 3420, and that's probably what this corresponds to. We call that an overtone. So, it's Nothing you have to worry about. So, but after you start looking at what an OH absorption would look like or an NH absorption would look like, you'd realize that that's probably not that right there. Um, cool, going a little bit further into this. Uh, this is the only signals outside of that fingerprint region. So notice everything else is to the right of the fingerprint region. We'll ignore them. So in this case, we've got this carbonyl. We now can say that it's not an aldehyde because there's not these two peaks at 2710 and 2810. Notice they'd show up somewhere in this region. They're not there. We also see that there's no big, huge peak from 25 to 3500. So it's also not a carboxylic acid. So if you compare the ketone and the ester, neither one of those actually has an additional peak. Same with the amide. But the big difference between the three um, often is where the carbon oxygen bond shows up. Is it closer to 1710? Is it closer to 1735 for the ester? Or a little below 1700 for the amide? So the amide additionally might also have some NH peaks, uh, if it's primary or secondary, between 32 and 3600. Uh, and in this case, we can see that there's 1700 right there. So our peak is really just above 1700 and definitely closer to 1700 than 1750. And so most likely this is going to be a ketone, with that peak being near 1710. Uh, had it been closer to 1750, we might have thought ester. 
here. Had it been below 1700, maybe we would have thought amide being more likely. So in this case, we can't really for sure say it's a ketone, but there's a good likelihood here that this probably is a ketone. Uh, so distinguish between a ketone and ester and amide, not the easiest thing always in the world to do. Some people also point out for an ester that this carbon oxygen single bond shows up down here in the fingerprint region. I personally don't like that because most compounds have a lot of stuff that shows up down here in the fingerprint region, kind of in the same range, and it's not the easiest thing to identify at all times. Uh, so in this case, we're going to kind of loosely say that it's probably a ketone again. So here we've got the spectrum of another carbonyl containing compound. So another peak here right above 1700. So again, maybe close to 1710. So, but in this case, this one should be a dead giveaway. You have this huge signal over here that is spanning the region from like around 2500 to 3500 and dead giveaway you've got a carboxylic acid here that's the OH of your carboxylic acid we'll find out that it shows up and appears very different than the OH of an alcohol so we definitely hear the OH of a carboxylic acid so we definitely here have a carboxylic acid so for the spectrum uh, one other thing to note one of the signal you might have to identify outside the fingerprint region here so again anything left of 1500 is this little guy and it's really subtle here so but it is on if you look at 3000 on the right side of 3000 and that is your sp3ch bonds coming right out of the oh uh, the acid oh stretch uh, in this case uh, something else that's probably you're going to likely identify. But again, I usually look around 3000, look a little to the left, look a little to the right, see if there's anything there. What's confusing here again is the OH stretch swallows up that whole region and your SP3CH bonds, are, are that's, the signals anyways, are coming right out of the middle of it.